Welcome to the UQ School of Architecture Architectural Technology Series. In this series of presentations about acoustics, we'll be touching on the identification and measure of sound, specific design strategies to control sound and noise, and try to understand how subjectivity and context play a role in acoustic design. In many instances, designers are brought into contact with issues around acoustics through legislative or client requirements. It's often seen as a specialised field of study for only specific building types. The design of the way a space sounds can be a formative factor in the experience and memorability of that space. It's often in those everyday circumstances that we forget about acoustics and it can significantly affect the quality of space, irrespective of the spatial and material effects. Take a cafe for example. We have been into many cafes where holding a conversation is nearly impossible. In most instances, thoughts around the acoustic design of spaces is ignored in the absence of legislative requirements. But a noisy cafe can over time drive customers away and significantly affect your appreciation of space and affect the bottom line of our clients' businesses. The best way to imagine sound is like a wave. Like a wave crashing into the shore, there are patterns to the wave cycles, but at the same time, there is interference in the way that waves interact as they hit the shore. Depending on the shoreline, waves can break up and begin to interfere with each other. They can reflect the energy back into the sea, or break up and have their energy dissipated when they crash into a rocky headland. The way that we appreciate sound is influenced by the general arrangement of the environment and the less we can control the environmental context the more difficult it becomes to control the waves. Sound waves travel through different materials in different ways depending on the density of the material that is transmitting the sound. For example, sound waves travel through the air at approximately 343 meters per second but through water they travel up to 1500 meters per second. The basic measurement of sound pressure is the difference in pressure between the sound wave and the ambient pressure of the medium that the sound wave is passing through. It is not a measure of the perceived intensity of the sound. The speed or repetition of sound waves over time is known as frequency measured in hertz. It is the measure of the number of cycles over a second. Human auditory sensitivity can detect sounds from between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz or 20,000 cycles per second. The inverse of frequency is wavelength which is the measure of the wave cycle from one peak to the next. The measure of sound is therefore a combination of the frequency and the strength of the sound. The complexity of measuring sound is that it is contingent on the context and can vary widely at any one specific point in time. Measuring sound is therefore a process of sampling over a duration and averaging the outcomes. Sound is a combination of the strength of the pressure wave, its frequency and the medium of transmission. The measure is known as decibels and it is a logarithmic scale which means the increase in intensity every 10 units is not linear but doubles at each measure point. In practical terms, the measure of sound, decibels, is calibrated against everyday noise situations so we can appreciate the relative intensity of sound. So, in a busy office or studio, we would anticipate a background noise measuring at around 70 decibels whereas a construction site could be significantly higher at 100 decibels. Sustained exposure to high levels of noise can cause health problems, namely the reduction of your hearing sensitivity, which is why in noisy environments we need to protect ourselves from sustained high noise. Sound becomes noise when it either causes disturbance or worse still, physical harm. Benchmarks and standards have been developed based on an averaging of disturbance or harm. With the right equipment, the sound level can be measured. In some instances, where the noise in an environment cannot be controlled, 
Additional personal protection equipment such as earmuffs are needed to protect that person in the environment. In other instances, such as meeting rooms, offices or auditoria, the control of sound levels must be achieved through the design of the space, as practically speaking, additional personal protection measures are inappropriate to the circumstance. Typically speaking, the control of sound is contextualised with the activity occurring in that space. In some instances, conversation and speech intelligibility is the main concern. In that instance, the absolute level of sound is not a driving factor, as everyone will be talking in the space. Rather, the behaviour of that sound in the space that helps with people understanding a conversation between those gathered around them becomes the issue, and so that they cannot listen into the conversation everyone else in the room. In other instances, it is the simple case of the level of sound. In residential design, for example, the level of sound that permits someone to sleep at night. Or somewhere in between, where there is a level of background noise, but not to the extent that you need to hear the person beside you, such as in an office environment. In summary, we understand that sound is a wave pattern, and that measuring it is a factor of frequency and intensity over time. It is measured in a log logarithmic scale called decibels. Sound can be, a, can be subjective and is influenced by its context. The measure of sound to determine standards of comfort and human safety have been developed over time and benchmarked to identifiable activities. The appropriate measure and controls of sound are in part based on the design of the environment that can be validated by measuring equipment which tests the sound against the benchmark benchmarks written in regulations and standards. Where design measures are unable to control sound, then personal protection equipment is used to safeguard human health. In the other videos, we will discuss how the design and material of space can affect the acoustic quality of that space.